So I did a live stream yesterday and I want to show the progress of what I worked on on that stream. Basically, I was trying to add in the ability for users to upload directly to their YouTube account from my application. So I'm gonna to try to walk you through to my best knowledge how OAuth is set up in terms of like connecting with YouTube and then also how I kind of implemented this in this project if you're interested. So here's a demo. We have my app over here and right now when you go to the videos that you might wanna publish, you can connect to your YouTube channel. Um, additionally, what I can do is I can click on this and say post on YouTube. So let's just show, if I click on post on YouTube, I'm storing some information about your tokens and also like your user ID so that if this already exists, then we don't need to like show this, we can show something else. So let's just go ahead and log in. And this is checking the database and saying, hey, you don't have tokens yet, so you wanna connect YouTube. So let's just say connect. And that's gonna make a request to the um, my backend, which generates a URL. And then I redirect the user to that URL, which you'll see here, we have the uh, ability to select my emails. So then after selecting my main account, I can go ahead and select any of my other channels that I have. So I have a bunch of different little channels I'm kind of experimenting with for this uh, you know, little short video creator. Let's do the uh, marketing and minutes channel. So let's click on this one and then I'll click continue and then I'll continue with that. So after I did that, I don't know if you saw, but after I clicked on the continue, it actually redirected me back to an API endpoint where I was able to take in a code that was passed in from Google. And then I verify that code against my Google client secrets and my client ID, which I'll probably kind of talk about in this video. And so if everything is good, I will actually get an access token back. I'm kind of hiding these so you guys can actually see them, but this is the access token. And then this is a refresh token. The access token typically lasts like an hour or so. The refresh token lasts a lot longer and you can use the refresh token to continuously get new access tokens. I might come in and actually make these things encrypted and then only be able to decrypt them with a environment variable just in case. It's, it's kind of best practice so that if someone were to breach your database, they don't get access to all your users' access token or refresh tokens. That'd be pretty bad. But I'm still, this is still a work in progress. But you can see here, I store the channel ID that the user has selected and I also store the channel title. So if I go back to the UI, you'll see that it says selected channel, marketing in minutes, and then I can click here to change what I'm connected to. If I decide I wanna to publish to a different channel, I can do that. So let's just try publishing this. I'm gonna go over here and click on this. I'll say post to YouTube. And this will take some time. It basically kicks off a convex uh, action to take the file and then it uploads that file to YouTube. So now if I log into that channel, you'll see over here, I have the secret to crafting the perfect call to action, which does line up with this, the secret to crafting the perfect call to action. So now I have a private video I can come in here, I can change the description, I can change the schedule. Now, I think I could potentially schedule videos in this app directly. It would just be more work for me. And honestly, I think just having all the videos in my YouTube channel where I can see the date, like I'm able to sort by date and when they're scheduled, and that'll make it easier for me as a user to like, okay, let's come in here and let's just schedule this for a certain day. All right, let's kind of walk through how this works because uh, it's it wasn't too hard, but it's also not really super easy. So the first thing you have to do is you have to go and make a Google Cloud app. So I have one called the Video Crafter. Let's go to my staging one because I'm doing everything local right now. So after you create your Google app, you get a private and you also get a public key. And so you have to put those in your environment variables because later on we're going to use them for doing the whole OAuth flow. But in order to actually get this working, you have to go and add your test users to this application so that you can allow these users to get access. Otherwise, what you actually need to do is you have to go and submit your application to be approved. That could take three to five days. And so once you have it all set up, I would say go to your actual like production Google app and then like have it be requested to um, uh, be set up. The second thing you have to do is under enable API services, you have to go and click on this button and you have to search for the YouTube Data API v3. So once you find that, there's a button that says enable, you can click it, and then now you get access to uh, doing things with YouTube. All right, let's walk through how this works in code, and I'm gonna kind of keep going back and forth with Eraser to draw out pictures. So like we have my Next.js application, and then I'm also using Convex for the API, so I'll just say like Convex API. And how this works is when the user clicks on post to YouTube, I first check if they have any tokens. So we'll just make a line and say, uh, check if they have tokens. One, check if they already connected. And then if not, we basically say, hey, you need to connect. So I prompt them with a, a modal and I say, hey, you need to connect. And once they click connect, we go ahead and invoke an endpoint to generate a OAuth URL. And so let's look at the code 
and see how that works. So I have an action over here called git auth URL action, which basically calls this method. So I had to bring in a library called Google auth library. And also I brought in Google APIs. You need both of these to get this going. But the first thing I do is I make sure you're logged in. You can't do this unless you're actually logged into my application. And if you are, I get the user ID and I encode it because I'm going to use that user ID to store it in the state of this generate auth URL. Okay, so I make this OAuth client using that ID and that secret. And then I also give it a callback URL so that Google knows where to redirect the user after they've successfully signed in. And then down here, this is the important part. I create an auth URL. Okay, so I have to provide it some scopes. If you don't do this, then you won't get access to actually do things on the YouTube API. So, so this is saying when I get back the tokens, allow them to upload videos and also allow them to read data from their channel. Um, because you need the read only so that I can actually get the channel name, I believe. And then up uploading, obviously, I need because you can't upload a video without it. And then I put some user ID on the state because later on I'll need to figure out what user just connected. Yeah, so that's kind of how that works. And so we'll get back an auth URL. And we'll just go ahead and send back that auth URL here. Uh, send back OAuth URL. Pretty straightforward. And then let's figure out where this is actually being called. So I'm going to go ahead and just find all the references to this. So find references. So if I go down, there is a, a drop down with a button. When you click on the button, it calls this method. And this is basically just invoking that endpoint to get the URL. And then I redirect the entire user to that new URL. Um, in fact, I'm going to do a location href like this because I think it was opening up a new tab sometimes. But anyway, their whole browser will redirect to Google. And then you remember you select your account and then you select your channel. And then YouTube is going to redirect them back to that redirect endpoint we talked about, which happens to be this, which is a HTTP endpoint. So let's go over here and look at that. Here's my endpoint. Basically, Google is going to send you a code and it's also going to send you some state inside of the query parameters. Okay, so we basically need to redirect the user to redirect to Google, which technically that would be like down here. So like, let's just do Google. Okay, so at step four, we redirect to Google and then they select their account and their channel. And then step five is redirect to my API with a code and state. All right. So this is where we're at right now in the code. I'm just looking at where I get back the code and the state. I make sure they're both defined. I decode the state to make sure I get the correct user ID. And then I have to process the code because you can't trust the code that comes in blindly. You don't know if it's actually sent by Google or if it's sent by someone else. This is a public API endpoint, right? So let's look at process code action. Again, I'm just setting up a client. I could probably do a little bit of cleanup. I'm like duplicating this uh, a couple of places, but I set up a client and then I use the code that was passed in in the URL and I get the token. So under the hood, this OAuth2 client is using this like client secret and the ID and the code and it's verifying everything's good. I don't think this has to phone home to Google at all. Maybe it does. But then eventually you get tokens and the tokens you'll have an access token, which is what you use to actually like make requests to the API. You get a refresh token, which you can use to grant new access tokens. So I think after an hour, you have to like refresh that token and get a new one. And then you also have an expire time. So these tokens do expire um, and in the UI, maybe you want to like show a different modal if the token is expired, or you can just do some like some error handling. If you try to make the request and it fails, then just refresh the token. And I think this uh, library does the refresh for you under the hood. So it makes it kind of easy. But yeah, we process the code and then we get back some tokens, right? And so now we get the access token, refresh token, expires token. And then I can use that access token to get the channel information. So again, how do we get the channel that they selected, like the title? Well, I basically make a request over here. Again, I set up a uh, OAuth client. I set the credentials that are passed in. And then I use the YouTube API using those credentials. And I say, hey, I need to get all of the channels that they have access to, which it'll only give you one, I believe. So I just grab the first one. And then if it exists, we basically say, hey, return the ID in the title. And so now we have the info and we have the refresh tokens. We have the user ID. We have all this stuff. And I basically say, hey, store this all in my database. And so that's where we are basically, if I go back to the diagram, um, if I put a database here, which I'm using Convex's database, it is going to just store all that information. So step six is store all the tokens, uh, channel info. All right, y'all having some fun yet? So this is how this is being stored. And then I redirect the user back to my videos page because right now this is the only page they can use to like, connect 
Um, eventually you may want to actually have this dynamically changed routes based on like where they clicked on the connect button. All right, so now let's check out when the user actually clicks on this upload button because that was just one flow. That was connecting your account to your YouTube channel. But now I have to like tell, you know, YouTube, hey, I want to upload this file that I just selected. So when the user clicks on this button, there's a handle post to YouTube, which basically goes down here. It checks to make sure that you're connected. And then it you know shows a loader. But here's the important part. We call this schedule video action and we pass in the video ID that they have selected. So if you look at this, what this is doing is we first verify the user has access to the video that they're trying to like upload through their account. And then we do some other checks, like make sure the video has an actual file. And then we check to say, hey, does the person have some YouTube tokens? And then we create an OAuth client again. And then we set the credentials. And then we try to upload to YouTube. Um, so if basically I get a file stream from that file I downloaded from Convex Storage. By the way, Convex does have like a file storage system over here. So like you can actually store and retrieve files in Convex. I don't have to pull in like S3 or R2 or anything like that. And so what this is doing is it fetches the file and then it has to create a node readable stream because I think Convex behind the scenes, the type of streams it uses are like web API ones. And basically tell it how to read from this stream. And then scrolling down here, you call YouTube videos insert. This is the fun part. This is where we actually can pass in the title that we want. We can pass in a description, which I'm doing a little bit of free marketing here. This video was created by thevideocrafter.com. I can change the privacy status to private, unlisted. I think unlisted is one. I'll just keep it as private though. Um, and then the most important part down here is the media. So you have to pass in that readable stream inside that body and that's going to upload to YouTube. There's also another uh, options you can pass in here. If you want to get like feedback, there's on upload progress and it's going to send you some information about like what percentage is done. Uh, I didn't really need to do that, so I didn't do it. And yeah, that's basically the entire flow. So if I were to just make sure I, you know, diagram this out, I'm going to go ahead and say like fetch file uh, from convex file storage. And then finally what happens is my API is going to go ahead and say, hey, I need you to upload, upload the video, and then that'll upload to their account. And then the user should be able to go to their YouTube account and see that. All right, so that's how it's all set up. It it seems a little complicated, but like once you do it, it's not as as hard as it might seem. And so for me, the next steps are I just need to go and like make my application be approved. And then hopefully within three to five days, I can actually have this feature deployed out to my app and then people can start using it and uh, testing it and hopefully nothing's wrong with it. And again, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything secure. So I'm going to go ahead and like read through all my code a couple of times, make sure I didn't mess up on anything and also try to probably encrypt these tokens before I store them in the, the backend. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments and also have a good day. Happy coding.